Hey, hey, welcome to Caspio Live. It's Ned. Uh, before I begin, as always, if somebody can just let me know that you can hear me okay, we will go ahead and begin today's presentation. So let me know in the chat window if you can hear me, and I will go ahead and begin with today's attendance tracking solution that we talked about that we were going to do. Loud and clear, good. Didier, all good. Excellent. Hopefully everyone's having a good week. Hey, Aaron, welcome back. All good. All right, so today's topic, believe it or not, we might actually have the fastest Caspio Live session that we've ever had. And in the past, I've never built an attendance tracker. I know surprisingly I never have, but it's actually turned out to be a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. So there's a simple task that's running in the background that's copying some data into a different table so that we can see the list of students and then we can just check off who's, who's here, who's present and who's not. So let's dive right into it so I can let you go and then you can continue on with your week. So everyone knows, before I say everyone knows, let me just show you my table structure so that you can see. Now my use case is using students. Of course you can have employees, uh, you can have other type of users, but I'm using students in my example. We have two tables in my students table. I only have two fields, student ID and the name. And then we need the attendance table. And inside this table, we have, again, the log ID, which is the primary key. We have the student ID, which is the foreign key, uh, date that they attended, uh, and also the status. We just check off if they're inside a classroom or not inside the classroom. So we have two tables. And there's a very simple task that's running behind the scenes. And what we're doing is, is copying the student information into the attendance table. So let me actually go back to my tables once again. You will see that I have five students listed. Okay. Now everyone knows, hopefully everyone knows that the inefficient way of doing this, something that you would typically not see, is when you're taking attendance, we know that we can build a submission form on top of this table and then pull the student's name in a drop down. So if the student is here, we select the student's name, we choose the date, check off the box, click submit one student at a time. And again, that's not very efficient. We want to be able to see a list of students and very quickly be able to check off who's present and who's not. So we run a task. It's a very, very simple task. Now I have a frequency running here. Let me just show you what I've done. Uh, frequency, my schedule is set weekly. Um, and then we run this on Sunday through Thursday. And then obviously I don't think we go to school on Saturday and Sunday. So we leave these two unchecked. The reason why I leave Friday and Saturday unchecked is because what I'm doing in my task is we're inserting data into the attendance table from the students table. We copy the ID, very similar to doing an audit trail. I've done a video on this in the past where we, you know, if you update a contact's information or you add a contact, we copy that information into a different table. The task is taking all the students from the students table and copying all the IDs into the attendance table. And what we're doing is adding one day to today's date. Okay, so it's running at midnight. Let me actually show you one more time. It's running at midnight and it's going to add one day to today's date for the following day. So when the teacher comes into the classroom, they run a report for today and they're able to see all those students copied over into the attendance table. So that's why um, when we look at this uh, task here, I add one day. And when you look at my frequency that I set weekly, on Sunday, we add for Monday. On well, Monday, we add for Tuesday. And then for Thursday, we add for Friday. This will add for Saturday and this will add for Sunday. That's why I leave these two unchecked. So if I if I run this, I actually ran this at midnight because I have it set at midnight. So in my table, you will see that it copied over for tomorrow's date, for November 9th. Okay, so I'm just going to manually change this to 8 because my report is set for today's filter. So I'm just going to change this manually to 8. very quickly but what it would do would automatically copy all of the students into this table here and then my data page um, today's attendance if I just click edit to show you my filter it is filtering on the date field and today that's the comparison type so if I hit preview now we're gonna be able to see all the students now I could change my you know custom formatting here for the checkbox it says no, I can maybe say pending or something like that. And I'm using grid edit. I think that's the easiest. You can also do a bulk edit 
or inline edit. So as you're taking the attendance, uh, I go into grid edit, I call out the names, all right, present, 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 uh, present, and maybe Miley is not, not present, we exit. And that's how we take attendance for today. The next day, it'll reset, okay? This will all say no. And then the professor will go in and check off who's uh, in the class and who's not in the class. And then I created a very simple report. You can build many charts off of this and many different pivot tables. I have a very simple one here that shows me by name uh, for the month of November. You know, Brian showed up twice, Mary once, Miley once, and we have Steve who came in twice into the class. And then we get the grand total here for November. And then grand total if you have multiple months across the year. You can build filtering criteria, you can build search forms, you can build charts. There are many different ways for KPIs to, to attract the attendance. But this will be, again, such a simple solution. I, I, I really thought in the back of my mind that it's going to be something complex. But as I started to build my task and my triggers, I realized, wait a minute, I can just run the weekly task Monday through Friday and copy the student ID over to the attendance table. And then using a report, we can just use a grid layout to just check off who is here and who's not. Now, you could also build this out, expand upon this by having an instructor table. So if the students are linked to a specific instructor or classroom, then you use RLS record level security to filter out the students based on that instructors, right? Um, so you would eventually not only copy the student ID over to the attendance table, you might actually copy the instructor ID there as well, right? So that you can run the record level security on the attendance table. So as the professor A, I see my own students. As professor B, I see my own students and et cetera. Uh, the screen is blurry. Let me know if it caught up. Sometimes there's a bandwidth issue, but hopefully, Lucas, let me know if it's still blurry. Let me know if you... if you were able to see all the content from today's live stream. Hopefully it came out clear. And hopefully you learned something new. You know, I even learned something new as I was putting this together. It's, it's in my opinion, it's actually a very simple and elegant solution. Uh, what if you want to do multiple courses, classes? Multiple courses. Yeah, so if you want to, like I, like I was saying, if you have multiple courses, then you have a courses table. You link the course ID to the students. Right, so you would end up building out more, expanding upon this, but the mechanism would still apply. You might just have to modify the task to copy some more information into the attendance table. Maybe even the class ID, the course ID, and maybe even the uh, instructor ID. So as I was saying here, if you had additional fields, then you're not only copying the student ID into the attendance table, you might copy the classroom ID, you might even copy the, um, the instructor ID over to the attendance table. Okay? This is great, by what if the class is not on a regular schedule? Can you expand upon that just a little bit, if not on a regular schedule? You mean like not Monday through Friday or different days or something like that? If it's random, maybe you set the, um, set the date and time when the class is supposed to happen. What do you do if you have a new student? So yeah, I mean, again, this is just a mechanism that's showing you the list of students. But if you have a new student, then you might build a, build a form to add it to the student's table, right? So if you have a table of students and you have a new student, you would have to add that student into this, into this table. And now that student's information will be copied over to the attendance table. The class is random days. Yeah, so I have it Monday through Friday using a task, but if it's random days, I guess you would probably have to, let me think for a second. In that case, you set the date and time of the class. And you have the class ID. And you would have to copy the class ID into the attendance table as well. One second, one second, I'm thinking about this. Right, because, you know, it would be by date, right? So it wouldn't be by time, necessarily, because Caspi doesn't handle date and time separately. It's together. It's a combined data type. Now, we have a JavaScript that can separate the date and date from time, but you would have to link the students to the classroom, right? So then, in that case... Once you set the date, if you run that task daily, 
it's checking against when the class is and then it's adding the plus one for the following day or the day before it, right? So you can still run the task daily and it's gonna check in the table if you have the date field when that class is supposed to happen and then it will copy the student information for that date, right? Right now I have it set to copy to just add one day to today's date, uh, but you could have it be on the actual class date. So I have it set for, like in my task, you can see I have it set for today's date. That's the timestamp that I'm using. But if you have a field in your table for classes, you might even have to do a join here to grab the class date when that class is supposed to happen, right? And you would use the class date in this, in this case, not the today's date. If that makes sense, hopefully that makes sense. Simply you would do a join here between the classes table right and the um, the students table so that you can grab the information for the class date and you will populate the class date field in here it's a bit more complex of a setup but it all comes down to setting up the task correctly in order to to run when that class is supposed to happen in order to copy the information for that date that specific date and you will set this simply to run daily instead of weekly or you can have it this way as well, as if you know that it's not going to be on, on Saturday and Sunday. But if you know it's going to be on Saturday and Sunday, then I would have this running daily. Check against the date in this table in order to copy the student information for that class. Hopefully I'm explaining myself, myself uh, clearly with that. It's a bit more of a complex setup. Uh, you wouldn't do on demand if it's random, okay? You don't do on demand. On demand is just for you to manually run behind the scenes in the background from the tables. You would always uh, run the task um, on a schedule, right? So in your case, I would have that running daily, right? And if the class, it's checking against that date, right? That you have in the classes table. And if it sees it, then it's going to copy the information over. Now that I see all these questions come in, I might have to uh, do a second session on this to expand upon it. Because I'm not an expert in tracking attendance. I don't know what the exact needs are because there's so many different use cases to be able to do that. Um, this is just a mechanism that allows you to copy the information so you can see the list of students. But then you, if you have additional tables and now you're trying to do RLS, multiple classes, it's much more involved. It's a bigger project. But... The idea still stands the same, right? You just have to configure the task, uh, both the schedule and also what you're actually copying over to the uh, to the attendance table so that you can run RLS and things like that. Uh, could you build a form where the user can initiate the trigger? Now, yeah, we can build a form that initiates the trigger. Give me one second. Let me just take a look at some other questions. Great, got it. This is timely for me. I'm currently doing something similar to this. Okay, good. It will be by date. Can you use the trigger to delete students? who did not attend that day once the professor check not present. Yes, you can build a trigger to check against that as well. Yeah. Um, so upon submission, as, as we build out the triggers, um, I might have to do a round two on this because I don't like to build anything during the live stream um, after the main content is done. But if you delete a student, then yeah, you would probably have to create a trigger um, run the action on delete of data, right? So if you delete a student, then you configure the trigger to, to do that. Oh, you might even, yeah. If the student does not attend, yeah, you, you're probably gonna have to use a checkbox or something to flag if the student attended or not. Well, you already know that actually from the list. So if they did not attend and you click exit on the report, I wonder if the trigger will fire because you're not technically deleting anything, you're just not selecting them. So you would have to have a separate report to delete the student from the attendance table. And if you delete the student, let me take a look. Delete the students who did not attend that day once the professor checked. Ah, I see, I see what you're asking. Okay. In that case, I don't know if you can, because I don't think it's going to work that way based off of the checkbox on the list. But I don't know why you would want to delete the student because it copies the student's information. If they're not present, you can run a report that that student didn't show up. So I'm just trying to want, I'm, I'm wondering why you would want to delete that student uh, from the table since we already know that they're not, they didn't show up to the to class that day. 
one thing that would improve the task is by giving the front end users the ability to push. I know, I know uh, that question has come up in the past where you can run the task manually from the front end, but today it's really just on the uh, server side in the back end. Thanks, RJ. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, it's a, it's a, again, I, I usually try to give you a simple solution. I know that um, it's not likely that somebody can just take this because it's much more involved, especially under students and professors and classrooms because there are more tables, right? But I'll take that note for myself that if I do these examples to give you something a bit more real life, you know, that can be implemented. Maybe even for like, I'm thinking like high school, right? You have multiple classes and then we know that it's a many to many because students can not only go to that one professor, but they can also go to a different professor. So that's a many to many. Um, and yes, if the instructor logs in, they see just the students for that class in that period and they can flag them if they're present or not. Um, and then the following day, again, they'll see a new list of students. So yeah, we would just have to configure the task to copy over more information into the attendance table, not just the student ID, but likely it would be the course ID and the, um, the instructor ID as well. So that we can do RLS on the attendance table. Real use case would be awesome. Okay, yeah, noted. I will do that next time. But hopefully kind of this gives you an idea how you can set it up. Um, the big part of it is just comes down to your table structure and the task. All you need is one task to run that. All right, so as promised, a very quick live stream today. Let me know if you have any questions. I don't have a, well, we do have a topic for next um, two weeks from now. It'll be on uh, what we were going to do about a couple of weeks ago. We were going to do a property management software. And that'll be a complete build from start to finish. Just, it'll be a long session. So we're going to build out um, a management portal where we can manage um, tenants, payments, and things like that. So if you wish to see something like that, how that's built ground up, I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> uh, the questions we asked are just for clarification to build on what we have learned. Just make it simple. Okay, yeah, perfect. Hey, Eva, good to see you. Welcome back. Yeah, questions are always good. I can always elaborate on questions too if you uh, if you have them. And all the questions that you came up with, um, I know that it's possible by adding more tables and configuring that task to properly pass the information over to the attendance table. And then I recommend just using grid layout to check off the boxes as opposed to, you can do bulk edit as well i don't know if i would do bulk edit and inline edit is just one at a time but grid edit makes it probably the easiest in my opinion the thing i don't like about grid edit which you can change uh, is when you you can update this text inside the style or localization i'm not really sure but it just doesn't make sense for me like when i check somebody off it just says exit grid edit why not just say update or something like that so i would recommend Maybe changing that link to say update or save or something like that. Okay, looking forward to the next topic. Got some apartment complexes and it would be nice to have a better tool for my property managers. Oh, nice. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> yeah, this topic comes up quite a bit. Actually, people are looking to build something like that. So usually when I come up with these ideas and use cases, it's because we have prospects who are looking to create something like that. So I'm happy to see that it'll be relevant to at least one person, <laughs> maybe more. Who knows? We'll see. All right. I won't keep you any longer. Thank you so much for attending today. I appreciate your time as always. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I, I can tell you that I learned something new as well on how to do that seeing how I've never actually had a need to build something like that. So it's pretty cool. Always happy to learn something new as well. So thank you all so much. I appreciate it. We'll see you in two weeks and have a good rest of the week. All right. Thanks, RJ Lucas. Yeah, I'm happy that it was helpful.
always happy to, to know that people are learning something new from the live streams. Uh, do you need me to make this available as a download or is it enough for you to just watch the video again at a later time and just pause on the task? So if you watch the video later, you can, it's not a, it's not a long task. You can just, you know, pause the video and just copy this over. Yes, as a download. Okay, I'll make this available as a download. No worries. Do you want me to add a few more tables just in case people want to have a classes table and a instructor table and how the task is configured based on that as part of the download or do you want as is what we looked at today yes okay maybe i maybe i'll maybe i'll create two different tasks you know we'll rename this one task one and then task two based off of additional tables class table that would be helpful okay good all right i'll do that a little homework for myself. Sounds good. Thank you all so much. Have a good rest of the week. And then we'll see you next week. Uh, sorry, in two weeks. I'm still going off of the old schedule. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Kinkapo. All right. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.